In this video, I'm going to guide you on how to create a graphical user interface using the JFrame form of NetBeans. Okay, so in this application, you'll see that I've created a blank application. It's called GUI Video. And I've, in my source packages, I've got one package called GUI Video. And inside of it, it's got my Java file that's containing my main method. And I'm only going to have basically one line of coding inside of this file. So we're going to create the rest. So I'm going to create a new uh, Java class first, and this class is going to be called job. So we're going to have a job class, and that job class will then be used in an employee class. So I'm just going to quickly set up two classes that we're going to use in this example. So now the job class will have a private field, let's say a private double, and it's going to call, be called salary. And then we're going to have another private, uh, let's say, string there. And we're going to have the name of the job. So it's basically two fields. And what I want to do here is to actually save these objects to a file, but saving them as objects. So I want to serialize them. So for this, you need to import java.io.star in order to get the serializable uh, interface. And we're going to say implements serializable. Okay, so then we've got the job class. It's going to have a salary and a name of job. So now it's easy to just quickly go and create by saying insert code. I'm going to create the constructor quickly. I want to select both of them. And that creates a new job for me. I will also go and say, let's give me the getter and the setters there for both of them and say generate. And then we've got the whole class. So one method that I want to add here is the equals method. So it's going to be public Boolean equals. And it's going to take in a job, the same type of this class. So I want to compare two objects of this class to make sure that they are the same. So in order to do this, we can just use a simple return statement. Or let me do, just do the if statement and we can come back to this one. So we're going to basically test if the object that you're busy creating or the object that's calling the method, if this dot salary. Now the salary is a double, so I can test with a double equal sign there. So this salary equals the job that was passed in salary. And at the same time, the let's say this dot name of job. And now because this is a string, I must use the equals method and it equals job dot name of job. So if both fields of the one object is the same as both fields of the other object, then we'll return true. Uh, and then if it's not obviously the else part there, we will return false. So now you can see they warn us in this if statement there it's redundant because we can actually remove all these return statements because that's the whole statement there. And we will just say return that whole statement. So if this statement is true, it's going to return true. If it's false, it's going to return false. Okay, so let's just take it into to two lines there. So I'm testing if the salary of this object, the salary is the same as the salary passed in and the name of jobs are the same then the two objects are the same and we return true. Okay, so that's the job class. So make sure you've got the job class there. The second class I want to quickly create there is the employee class. So we're going to call this one employee. We're going to say finish. And for the employee class, we're going to do the same thing. I want to also have that import statement java.io.star. And then in the employee class, we're going to have a few fields now. We're going to have private string we're going to have a name for an employee. We're also going to have a private string surname for the employee. Then we will have a job for the employee. So we're going to go to that job class and this one, let's just call it job there. That will be the job of the employee. But you can see that the employee class then has a job. So there's has a relationship between the employee and the job. OK, and then we're going to have one last field there, private int staff number and that will be the staff number of the employee okay so those all those are all the fields that we're going to need there so we're going to quickly create the constructor there and i want to select all of them again and say generate and that is my constructor then let's get some getters there and setters so the getters and setters select all and then there's all your getters and your setters 
Right, so for now, this is fine. Uh, I, I'm not going to create copy constructors for job and so forth. So in this case, uh, this, this will suffice, this will do. This is a simple employee class. And uh, the main thing here is that the employee class are using a field that's part of another class. Okay, so I'm going to also say here implements serializable. And this just means that we are able to save objects of these both these classes to a file but to a data file as an object as a whole okay so we've created the employee class and we've created the job class and we're going to create or use those classes now in order to create objects in this graphical user interface of ours okay so let's create the first graphical user interface page that we're going to do now so this is a bit new we're going to go to new and instead of saying java class now i'm going to say jframe form so if you open up jframe form it, it asks you for the class name so you can see it's also connected to a class and i want to call this one let's say add new job so this class or this form will help me to add a new job and you can see that they they give us then i think i'm going to close down services tab there so we can have a bit more space although it doesn't give us more space okay so this is the add new job. So you can see that this is now the window. I can resize this window the size I want it. I can resize it horizontally, vertically, or by just dragging to the corner there and resizing it. So it's up to you how you want to resize it. And you can see at the bottom, at the right hand side corner, you can see the width and, and the height of that specific frame. You can also use that eye there to give you a preview of how big it will basically display. OK, so now on this screen, I want to go and create or add a few components to the screen. So you see that there's a palette that was opened up. And the main thing here, you can see that we've got swing con containers, we've got swing controls, swing menus and so forth. And there's also AWT that you can use. But remember that we would rather use the swing components. So for the swing components, let's go to controls. I'm going to add a new label in here. So there's the label. I just drag the label, click and drag the label. Now this label, if I double click on it, will be create a new job by entering, let's say, the data below. Right, so there's a, basically just the label that we dragged in there. And for that label, there's a few properties now that you can set. So on the right hand side, you can see there's properties by clicking on that label, you can set some properties. So I'm going to set the font there to be of size 18 and bold and say OK. And you can then see that that changes our label to look a bit differently now. So I'm going to re, uh, just recenter it in the screen there. If I click on the eye, you can see that's basically how it's going to look like. OK, so then the next item that I'm going to add there is a label again. And we're going to ask the user to please give us the name of the job. OK, so there's the name of the job. And then we're going to ask him to enter that in a text field. So under swing controls, make sure you go to text field. Now look at my alignment lines there. There's a space of, let's say, two there. And you can see there's a bottom line that's aligned there with the text. So the text of the text field as well as the text of the label will be aligned. OK, so there's the text field. On the text field, you can see it is editable. I'm going to go to let me just move this one up a bit. You can see there's the text of the text field. So I'm going to remove the text of the text field there. And maybe on that text field, let's just make it a bit bigger, something like this. OK, so that's the name of the job. Then let's add another label there. So I'm going to drag in another label. And now look at the lines again to actually align them. So I'm going to say let's add two spaces there. But can you see it's aligned on the right hand side? OK, so I'm going to say for this label, I'm going to say salary for this job. And you can now see they are nicely aligned. Even if you click on the eye there, they are nicely aligned. OK, so then we're going to have also a text field there. So let's drag in that text field. I want to have it aligned on the side for that one as well. And just drag it until you get the alignment lines there. So you'll see they, they are basically aligned. OK, so now the text inside of that one also, if I can make this one a bit bigger, 
the text. I'm going to remove it so it will just look like that. Then I'm going to add a button there at the bottom to actually save this new job. So I'm going to have a button there. Drag in the button. There's the button. You can decide where you want to place that button. Let's move, open up this one a bit better. So let's just have a look at the eye there. I think we can actually make this window a bit smaller. So let's just resize this window to something like, let's say, this. So if you look at it, this is how it will pop up to the screen. Enter the job, salary for the job, and then we're going to have that button there. So the button, if you click on it, remember there's properties to set for the button as well. So for the button, I'm going to set the text on the button to save. And that will change to save there. Now this uh, looks a bit boring. So let's say we want to add a picture to the save button. So what I want you to do is to go to http tinyurl.com GUI pics. And by, by clicking on that or entering on that one, it will take you to a web page where it will start automatically downloading a file for you to use. And that file is basically just a folder called pics and it looks like this. There's a few pictures that we're going to use. So you can see there's a save picture. So let's go back to, to NetBeans and I'm going to click on save there. And I want to import that save picture now to my project. So you can see that I can go down. There's an icon property. If you click on the button, there's an icon property. And I'm going to click there on the dots, the three dots on the right hand side of it. And say I want to import to my project. So now in my, uh, let me just go to my desktop there. And there's my pics um, uh, folder there that I've asked you to, to basically download. And there's the save picture. So I'm going to say next there and I'm going to say finish. And you can see there's the picture and I'm going to say OK there. So you can see now I've got a nice picture to my button uh, called save. Right, so that's basically it then for, for this uh, window. If you click on it, you can see it looks like this. So we're going to enter the name of the job. Uh, let's say cleaner and the salary 10,000 or whatever. And if we click on save, we will add a new object to our database. At this stage, we haven't done any coding for the save button, so nothing will work. So we're first going to design the, the graphical user interface and then come back to the coding. Okay, so the next window that I want to create, I'm going to close down that one. Let's just save it first. I'm going to go to my project folder or my package again there, and I'm going to say JFrame form again. But this form will now be add employee. So now if we have jobs, we can start adding employees. Okay, let's see if I can resize this a bit. Okay, I'm just going to make it a bit bigger there. So what we want for this one to adding a new employee, we also have a label right at the top that will tell us what we're basically doing there. And I'm going to say add a new employee by entering the details below. Okay, so let's uh, change the font for this one as well. So I'm going to go to the property font. I want to have it bold and 18, the same as the previous window. So there's the window. It's going to show add a new em employee by entering the details below. Okay, so let's see if we can make this one just a bit bigger there. Something like this. Okay, so we'll see how, how we can uh, get past this uh, small windows now in this video. But in any case, uh, the first thing I want to add then is a label. And that label will say enter employee name. So remember in our employee class, we asked for the name of the employee, the surname. So let's have an, add another label there. Uh, align it to the right there and we're going to say enter employee surname and then we'll have another label there where we're going to ask enter or let's say choose a job and the job we will choose now from a list of jobs that we created earlier on so we're going to use a combo box for that one and then for the last one that we're going to ask the user there to enter is the staff number. Enter the staff number. Right, so there we've got all the labels that we're asking the questions. Now for the employee's name, we can use a text field. So let's make it a two space there, but aligned with the text. The same with this text field. 
aligned with that one. And then we're going to use a combo box. There's the combo box. So we're going to drag in the combo box there, also aligned to those text fields. And then the last one will also be a text field again, aligned to the rest. Right, so there we've got, if we open it up, it looks something like this now. It's not very beautiful. So let's just make it a lot bigger, make those fields a lot bigger. So that we've got some space uh, for the user to type and we're going to have... Uh, a bit more data in that combo box so let's make everything the same size you can make it smaller if you want so basically then it will look something like this so there will be our items that we're going to choose from which will be our jobs at this stage it's just a few items that was added there if you're only using a combo box like it's here you can actually go to the combo box let's open up the properties a bit and you can see the model there by opening it up you can just basically randomly type your items that you want to have there so in this case i'm going to keep it as item one two three and four because we're going to change them in coding later on right so the last component i'm going to use here again is the button i'm going to add the button to the screen and the text on that button again will be save and the icon for the button now because we added the the save button to our project it will be in this list of icons so i'm going to choose save there and i've got the exact same save button there so if i click on the preview now it looks something like this maybe we can move the button up a bit let's say to there and we make this frame a bit smaller so let's have a look at this one i think this would be great so let's just remove the text in those uh, text fields so if you if you select your text fields i'm going to select them all by holding down shift select all the text fields and let me just see if i can get the text there basically just remove the text property there and you'll see that all of them is now empty so the user will type his name the surname you'll choose the job from the list and then he'll enter his staff number and then click on save Right, so we've done with that frame as well. We can save, close down that frame. Now the next frame that we're going to do there will be a new JFrame form again. And I'm going to call this form Edit Employee. And we're going to say Finish there. Now, I'm not going to do every edit function of uh, deleting and everything like that because you can go and have a look at how you do that. I think if you grasp the concept of just changing a value, then it's easy to delete and update or whatever you want to do with it. So for this frame, let's go and add a label at the top. And this label will basically say edit employee data. Then let's go to the font and the font will again be bold and 18 like the others. And this one will just say edit employee data. I think we're going to have this one also a bit bigger. Um, see if we can resize it a bit bigger there and get it in the middle somewhere. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay, so then we're going to have a label again. And the label will there be choose the employee. And then after that label, we're going to have the employee's name. So let's say two spaces in line to the right hand side. Double click there. And it's going to be employee name. Then another one there, two spaces, a line to the right, uh, let's say employee surname. And then another label there, double click on it, employee job. And then the last label there will be for the staff number. Right, so we're going to double click there and say employee staff number. Right, so there's the labels that we're going to have. So if you run it or basically just click on that eye icon there, you can see they are nicely aligned to the right hand side and there's enough space between them. Okay, so now we add some components there. And the first one we're going to add there for to choose the employee will be a combo box. So we'll go to the file where all our employees are saved and we'll we'll get our employee data from that file and show them all inside of this combo box then the employee's name will just be a normal text field just try that again okay there we go right 
Just resize it the same size as that one. That's the employee's name. Then the surname, the exact same thing. Align it to the left hand side there and to the right so that they are the same size. Then also for the employee's job, we're going to use a combo box again to show the job there or show all the jobs so that the user can change the job, the job there if needed, but also show the specific user's job. And then the staff number will be a normal text field again. So let's align them to the right. And there we go. Let's click on the eye quickly. It will look like this. And I think that would be fine. Let's just add a button at the bottom so that if uh, you are done saving the data, we will have that button at the bottom. Okay, for that button again, uh, let's just have that picture there. So the icon property will be saved and the text property for that button will be saved as well. Okay, so then we have a button that looks like this. Let's just have a look at it. I think maybe let's move the button up a small bit. So yes, I think this would be fine. The user will choose the employee. It will show his name, his surname, his job, and his staff number. And then you are able to make changes and click on save. Let's just quickly remove uh, for all three of those text fields. Let's just remove the text. So it's this one, this one, and that one, holding down the shift key. Uh, if you go to the text property, you are basically emptying the text. So clicking on the eye again will give you this layout. And this is the layout that we want. So I think for this example, let's add a delete button there as well. So next to the save, let's move it a bit to the left. We're going to add another button there next to it. And we're going to have that button. And let's say the text there will be delete. And then we'll check quickly for the icon again. So because we only have the save icon there, let's click on the three dots again. Then go to import to your project. And one of the pictures I gave you was that exit button there. So I'm going to use that one and say finish and it looks like this and we're going to say okay. So there's there's your delete button then. Maybe we can resize this button to be the same size as the other one. So it will basically look like this. Let's just see how it looks. Okay, so we've got save and we've got delete. Right, so we're going to be able to save new employee data or change the data and we can we are also able to delete this specific user. Right, so that's the edit employee data. And then the last one that I'm going to do now quickly is actual front page of our application, which will have a, a simple menu system. So let's create that one also. I'm going to say new JFrame form and let's call this one the menu and then say finish. So this will be my main window that will show right at the start. And uh, if we go then to our main method there, we can basically just say new menu and let's just call dot set visible and we set the visibility to true for that specific component. So if you run the application now, you'll see that that window pops up, but we haven't done anything yet. Okay, so this, this is the menu window now and this menu window, I want to add a few properties there or a few things to this one. So I think the first thing that we need to do there is you close down swing controls and you're going to go to swing menus now. So the first thing we'll add there is the menu bar. Now the menu bar will give you two file or two menus already, the file menu and the edit menu. So we're going to keep the file menu, but the edit menu, you're going to right click and say edit the text there. We're going to have a, men a menu called add. And then I want to have another menu. So I'm going to drag in another menu there. And that menu, right clicking on it or just clicking it twice, not double clicking it, but clicking it twice or just saying edit the text. And we're going to have that one as edit. Now, in every menu that we've got there, we want to add some values to them. So for the file menu, for example, we want to have a menu item there. So I'm going to drag in a menu item and I'm going to say if you double click on it, you'll see it takes you inside of your coding, which I don't want to. So you can see on any form, there's source and there's design. So design takes you back to the visual editor and source takes you back to the coding. So let's go back to design, right click and say edit text. And then we're going to have this one as exit so that the user can exit the application by choosing file exit. So on the exit there, on the exit menu item, we're going to go and change some values there as well. Let's set the icon there to that same exit picture. 
So you can see then in the file menu, we've got exit there. Now let's go to the file menu itself. So if you click on file, then you go to icon and we're going to go to the three dots again and import there. And we're going to use the folder one. So finish, add that. So you can see then if you look at, okay, this uh, preview button actually doesn't show your menu system. So for that to, to actually see something, you need to run your application. And then by running the application, you can see there's my file and exit. Okay. So now let's go to add quickly. And for add, let's use a picture again. And we're going to go to add there, say next, say finish. And that will be our add picture. Right. And then for edit, let's go also to icon, three dots, import to the project. Go to edit, next, finish. And that's the edit picture. We're going to say, okay. So we'll have, if we run it now, we'll have our application with those three menus. We've got file and exit, add and edit. And now we're going to add some values or some menu items to those as well. So for your add, we're going to add uh, two menu items there. So one, two menu items. On the first one, let's edit the text there. That one will be add new employee. Maybe we'll have the new there also a capital N. And then for this one, we'll also edit the text. And this one will be add new job. Right now for, for add new employee, let's go and set an icon there as well. So we're going to go to import add employees, the picture's name, finish. And it's going to look like that. Add new job. Go to the icon again, three dots. And let's take job there. Next, finish. And it will look something like that. Right, so we've got our file system now. And then the last one there is to edit a new employee or edit, not, not a new one, edit an existing employee. So we're going to add in a menu item. And we're going to say edit employee. And then if you click on that one, let's use that same icon that's called edit. So you can just choose it from the list if it's already there. And then let's look at our application by running it quickly. So there we go. This is then the file menu, the add menu and the edit menu. Right. Easy to do a menu system. Now, the last thing I want to do quickly is to go to the content pane. And I think let's add a a label here in the content pane. So we let's go back to swing controls. I'm going to add a label there. But this label will have no text, but we're going to have an icon set to it. So let's import the project. We're going to use that main there. So finish and OK. So you'd see it's a big picture and I'm going to remove the text on the label. Right. Let me just see if I can resize something here that I can see what's going on. Right almost there right so this is basically the picture it's going to show like that let's just uh, look at it that's the window so maybe we can just move that picture a bit or maybe make this window a bit smaller if it's possible there we go look at it now okay maybe we can just move it a bit to the right And let's look at it now. So your window will basically look like this. Let's run it quickly and see how it runs. And there we go. We've got a nice picture there. We've got the file, the add and the edit menus. And now we can actually start coding. Now for every one of my windows, you can see that I don't have the, the text set as the title there at the top. So there's a few things that we want to do now. So inside of my my frame so if you click on your frame itself not on the on the label there uh, let me just see if i change something now still looks fine so if you click on your content pane and another way of doing it is to go to your j frame there at the top so you can see on in the navigator there just click on your j frame so on your j frame you can see that there's the default close operation so on the very first page we want to have the default close operation as exit on close and the title will be something like welcome to the employee system that's the title of your window 
So now if we click on save and we run this again, you will see the title of your window will now have that specific title. Although it's not showing. Let me just see. That's the title. Let's save again. Look at the eye there. Clicking on the eye shows it. So I think it was just not saved yet. Let's see if it runs now. Okay, so there we have it. Welcome to the employee system at the top. That's your, your title for the window. And if I click there, it closes my window. So let's just quickly have a look at all the other windows that we defined. So I'm going to close down menu now. Let's go to add employee quickly. And then you can see there's also default close operation. But now if we add a new employee and we close that window, we don't want the whole application to close. So we're just going to say dispose, which removes the window, but it's not actually uh, closing down my application. So we can just have this one add a new employee. And then we can save. Then uh, let's close down that one. Let's go to add new job. And clicking on the J frame there, default close operation also dispose and the title will be create new job. I just want to make sure it's not clicked anymore. Save it. So that one should be fine. Let's look at this one. Create new job. Yes. And then let's say edit employee. Make sure you're on the J frame. Default close operation dispose. Edit employee details. Right, so let's save it. And if you click on that one, it should say edit employee details. Okay, so if we run the application now, well, basically we haven't set up anything. So we'll just see the main screen. And then if you click on it, it will close down. Okay, so now the, the next thing that we want to do quickly is to set what will happen if we then click on every item in the menu. So I'm going to go to the menu system quickly. So this is the menu one. I'm going to just uh, resize this a bit. Let's just make it a bit bigger. So let's say we click on the exit button there. So by getting to get to the, the private inner class that activates this exit button, you need to double click. And you can see if you double click, it takes it directly to that inner classes action performed method and you can say what it should do. So we're going to say system dot exit and we're just going to pass in the zero there, which will then exit your system. So if you run it now and the user goes to the file menu, there's the file menu and clicks on exit, you can see that the whole application exits. OK, so let's go back to design then. Now for the add method or sorry, the add menu, and we're going to click on add new employee. Just double click that one. It will also take you if you go a bit up, you can see there's the cursor. It takes you to that specific buttons action performed method. So what we want to do here is to start. Remember, we are now at adding a new employee. So in order to add a new employee, we're going to call that class. And that class is a new add employee. If I remember correctly, on the left hand side, it's called add employee. So we're going to say new add employee and we're going to set it to is or set visible. And we're going to set the visibility to true and that will start showing it. So let's just see if it runs. If you run it now and you go to add new employee. Oh, there it is at the back. I don't know why this window is in the front. We'll set, change the settings now. But you can see there's there's the employee or the add new employee. So let's just have a look at the settings for this J frame quickly, the menu J frame. So if we go to the menu now. Let's just go to design. And look at the properties quickly for the J frame. You see it's always on top, so I'm going to uh, remove the always on top there. So it should not be always on top. So if we run it now again, let's go to add, add new employee, and there we can start adding the new employee data. You can see if I close it, the whole application doesn't close, but closing that one closes down the whole application. Okay, so now the next one will be in the add menu, the add new job. So for the job now, you can see there's my cursor. 
So for the add new job, the class is called add new job. So we would just say new add new job that creates a new instance of it. And then on that instance, we're going to set, set the visibility to true. Then go back to design. The last one there is then for edit employee. So if you double click that one, it also takes you to that private inner class. And what we'll do there is to call the edit employee. We'll go back to source edit employee. That's the name of the class also called edit employee. So let's just add that one also. So it's going to be new edit employee employee dot set visible. And we're going to set the visibility to true. All right. So let's save and run this. And now we should be able to, to work between those windows. So if I say file exit, it exits the application. If I run again, if I go to add new employee, I'm getting the add new employee box there. If I go to add new job, it's opening the add new job. If I go to edit employee, it opens up edit employee. Okay, so that's how you'll move or use your menu system in order to do what we want to do. So basically, we are done with this frame where we um, choose what to do. So I'm going to close it down. Also close down that frame and also my, my GUI.java there. And then what we're going to do now is to go to add new job. So we'll start with this one. So add new job looks like this. We're going to ask the user to enter his, the name of the job and the salary of the job. And then he's going to click on save. So the save button is the one that we are interested in. Here you can see that this one is called JText field 1. That one is called JText field 2. So you can refer to them using those. Or you can right click on the, con on the specific component and say change the variable's name. So if you don't want to have a JText field 1, you can change it to, let's say, job name. And you can see the name of the variable is now changed. Okay, so let's just do the same for this text field. I'm not going to do it to all of the text fields. So I'm going to change this variable name to say salary job and say, okay, so it's job name uh, or maybe say, sorry, job salary. And it's named the same way. Okay, so job name and job salary is then the two uh, text fields there. And then if we click on save, we want to save the data of those two. So if you click on the save button now, uh, let's just go up and see where is that. So you can see there's the coding for what should happen when you click on the save button. So the first thing that we need to do is to get whatever the user typed there in those two text fields. So it's job name and job salary. So we can say string name or yeah, let's say job name. See now the variables will give us a problem there. So I call this one job name and job salary. Um, so maybe let's just call it name and then the name will be going to that text field which will be job name I'm going to say job name dot get text and remember if the user is typing the text you could add some white space so if you remember the trim method that will help you also to remove some white space that the user entered and then the next one where you can get there is the job. What is the job or the name of that job? Sorry, that's not the name of the job. That is the salary. So the salary will be then, what did we call that one? So the salary for the job will be job salary. That's the name of the edit or the text field. So it's job salary dot get text. Gets the text, whatever the user typed, and then you can use the trim method again. But just to make sure that the user, user actually types something before clicking on the save button, because let's say he doesn't click anything there and then he clicks the save button, then you're going to have a problem saving those data because there's nothing in it. So the first thing we're going to do is to first test if the first JTEX field, so which is job name, let's say job name, come on, dot get text. And then we're going to call the is empty method empty is empty method to check whether that uh, whatever the user typed there is actually empty. So basically, it didn't type anything. So if that one is empty, or uh, let's say the other one is what job salary job salary dot get text 
dot is empty. So if either one of the two is empty, then we want to just show a normal J option pane. So to use J option pane, we're just going to import Java X dot swing dot star. And let's go down and say, right, there we want to show a message, J option pane dot show message dialog dialog and the message that I want to show to the user is something like please enter all fields right so let's just test it quickly you'll see what happens now um, actually I think it's going to throw me an exception now let's go to add new job there and say save you can see please enter all fields okay so it went fine let's just close it down and then the else part there the else part is if there is then something entered we can get the values by calling this so I'm going to cut it and I'm going to paste it there now the main thing here that that I want to use to save the data so I'm just going to save this file and we're going to continue with this one I want to create a method first where we're going to get some data from files which we still doesn't have but we'll we'll set it up now so we're going to have a method public void populate array list and this method will help me to read the data from the file first and before we add new jobs so we want to first see where's the existing jobs and then to the existing jobs we're going to add this new job so in order for this to work I also need an import there java.util.star which will help me to use the array list so at the top I'm going to create maybe we can use a, a private one yeah let's just use a normal public array list there so we're going to be array list and the type of this array list will be job so we're going to have an array list full of job objects and let's call it jobs now inside of the init components there, just after init components, so this initialize components basically builds the coding for your user interface that you design. And if you go down a bit, you can see there's generated code there. If I open that up, this is the generated code for that user interface that we just built. Okay, so just after that, we'll initialize the array list. So we're going to say jobs equals new array list and also of type job, obviously. Okay, so there the array list has been initialized, initialized. And then I want to call this one to say populate the array list for me. And that just means that I want to get data added to the jobs array, array list. So in this case, what we want to do is to go to a specific file and get the content of that file. So I'm going to have a try and a catch block here. And this catch will just catch the IO exception. You remember in previous videos we said at the top of the method there should be throws IO exception. So now instead of saying throws IO exception, we catch the IO exception there. Okay, so in order for the IO exception to work, we also need to have an import statement there, java.io.star. Right, and then it should be fine. Okay, so in the catch there, we can just show a J option pane dot show message dialog and then first null for the first argument null second argument what you want to show to the user so we're just going to go with that e object dot get message and that gets me the exception message displayed to the user now it's it's still giving us a problem there because we haven't done anything in the try block that could throw an io exception so let's see what we need to do. The first thing I'm going to do is to open up that file. So I'm going to use the file input stream class. And we're going to call it, let's say, file equals new file input stream. That's working with data files. And let's say the name of the file will be jobs.txt, no, .dat, a data file. And then to make a connection to that file to actually start reading from it, we're going to read objects. So it's going to be an object input stream. And let's call this one input file equals new object input stream. And you're going to pass in your file object there. So that will help us to actually now read from the file. So this one makes the connection to the file. This one has got all the methods that we can read from the file. 
Then if you remember correctly, we're going to use a Boolean variable to check whether it's the end of the file. And we're going to set that to false right at the start because if you start reading, it is not the end of the file. And then we use a while loop that says not end of file. While it's not the end of the file, we'll keep on extracting data. Right, so in this while loop, we will also have a try catch to basically find out when are we at the end of the file. So we're going to say we're going to say catch there the end of file exception. Let's call it E as well. And then we're going to make sure that we catch any other exception as well. So I'm going to have the exception, let's say F there. So to catch any other type of exception that could occur. Right, so the end of file exception, let's just show J option pane there again. I think I'm going to copy this one. Let's copy that line there. And in this catch, as well as in that catch, we're going to have the same thing. But this one will just be the F there. So that object and the e.get message. Now in the try, so what happens if uh, no, if the end of file happens, we're not going to show a message. We will actually change this end of file object, or sorry, Boolean variable to true. Okay, so when we when there's an end of file exception, we know that we are at the end of the file and we cannot read anymore. So in the try, we'll actually try reading from that file. So while reading, we're going to add this to our array list that has been declared at the top. So there's your array list defined and it's uh, declared, initialized, and then we're going to say jobs.add. And now we want to add an object from the file while you can still read from it. So we're going to say add, and the method that you're going to use is in the input file. So we call this one input file. So it's going to be input file dot read object. And that reads a new object. But that object that gets returned is of type object. And you need to cast it to the type that you saved it as. And we're going to save them as job objects. So by calling input file that read object, that gives me the job object that was saved into the file. And converting that to make sure that's a job object. And we're adding that to the array list called jobs. Okay, so we can save now. So this is basically what's going to happen. And then after your while loop, we're just going to close that file. So we're going to say input file dot close. And that releases the resources for that file. And it saves and closes the file. Okay, so what happened now in this method, populate array list. So it will go to the jobs.dat file, which we will not have right at the start. So you'll see if we run this now, it's going to actually, actually throw us an exception. But we catch that exception, so it won't halt our application. So we say add new job not found but it still shows us the window so we can add a new one now and create the file okay so no problem if it, the file does not exist we're just going to show the user the file does not exist it basically basically catches uh, this io exception and it shows the message as the file does not exist okay so it doesn't halt our application which is what we want okay so now in the let's go back to design so now we have all the previously saved job objects. So if we click on save now, what did we do? We checked if both if those two fields are empty or not. If they are empty, we will show please enter all fields. Otherwise, we get the name, we get the salary, and now we can create a new job object. So we can say job, job equals new job. And then the job could be, let me just go to the job class quickly. We're going to accept the salary first and then the name of the job. So first the salary. But now the salary should be an inted or a double, I think. Let me just see. It should be a double. So let's convert that to a double. So it's going to be double dot pass double. And we're going to pass in that string salary there, which will convert that salary to a double. And the second argument will be then the name of the job. So there's our new job object created. And what we want to do now is to go to the jobs array list and we want to add this job to the job array list. Right, and that is it. Now we're saving that new uh, job. Okay, so now after this, we want to make sure that we call a method to save all the jobs back to the file. So I think let's create a method after this one and we're going to call this one uh, public. Now, let, let's make it void as well. And we're going to say save jobs 
to file. Let's open it up there. We're going to save all the jobs to the file now. And what we want to do is to use a try catch block there. So inside of this, we're going to have a try catch block in order to save the contents now to a file. And that will also be an IO exception that we're going to catch there. And that IO exception, we can also just show that J option pane there by saying E dot get message. Right. So now if we want to save this jobs now to the file, we need to have that file output stream object now. So you remember when we read it, we use file input stream. So to write it's file output stream. And then let's call this one also file equals new file output stream. And now passing into this one will be that same file that we read from, which is jobs.dat. So we're going to save back to that file again. And then we're going to say object output stream. Let's call this one out file, output file, equals new object output stream. And we're going to pass in that file object. Okay, so now we made a connection to the file again, and we are now ready to start writing to the file. So what we basically want to write to that file is in the jobs array list. So we're going to run through that array list by saying integer i equals zero, i less than and it's going to be jobs.size, which gives me the size of the array list. And then you're going to say I++. So now we're going to write that jobs array list. Every single job object inside of it, we will write to the jobs.dat file. So we're just going to say output file. Dot, and the method you're going to use is write object. And the object that you want to write is going to the jobs array list dot get and you're going to go to get i there now what is this going to do again jobs is the array list get i gets a job object and we're saving that object to the file called jobs.dat and then after saving you can just go and say output file output file dot close that closes the file and just remember to also tell the user that you actually saved this thing um, or this uh, job successfully. So let's just use the J option pane again. But instead of saying e.get message there, we will say, uh, let's say successfully saved. And then if you want to close down this window after saving, you can just say this dot dispose and that will close down the window for you or the frame for you right so basically now after calling saves save jobs to file it will create that file for us so let's run a, run this thing quickly you'll see the very first time we run it add a new job it will say that there's no such file or directory so i'm going to add a new job let's say cleaner and the salary for this job is 5000 rand and i'm going to save so let's just see what's wrong with this button now that's not doing anything. Let's close it down. See if there was any exception that occurred. No exception. So let's just see. Ah, we haven't we haven't called this method. So save jobs to file is the method and we need to call it somewhere. So obviously when we click on the save button, let's just double click the button. After adding that job to the array list, we're going to call that save control space save jobs to file that saves the jobs all the jobs in the array list to the file and it displays the message to the user so let's just run it quickly so we're going to go to add new job you can see that it's still empty let's type cleaner again the salary 5000 say save and you can see successfully saved and it closes the window when we're done so the next time i go to add employee now you can see no error about the file that's not found because that file has now been created. Okay, so that's how we add a new job. So now we need to go and have a look at how can we add a new employee. And that's basically the same thing. So I'm going to keep op open this file and let's go to add employee quickly. 
Now for this window, you can see that what we need from the user is, is, is name, is surname, and we need the jobs as well. So again, we need to read from a file to get all the jobs, but also to get all the employees that's currently there so that we can add this employee to the other employees in the file. Okay, so let's go to the source code quickly before we do anything else. And I'm going to add an import statement at the top. So we're going to say import, basically the same import statements that we had there. So let's just copy them in the add new job. It will be all of those. And then we need to go and create that array list. So I'm going to say array list, uh, or both array lists. One will be of type job, and we're going to call it jobs again. And the other array list will be of type employee. That's the other class we created, and we're going to have this one named employees. Now let's set up both of them quickly. So after init components, we're going to have jobs equals new array list. And the array list will be of type job. And let's just close it down. And then the employees equals new array list. And that one will be employee as well. Okay, so that is setting up the two array lists. And now before we do anything else, we want to get all the existing jobs and employees from the files. So I'm going to have that same method again that's called populate array list. Oh, I uh, took too much there. Let's just go down a bit. I want to take the whole populate array list method there. That one, I'm going to copy it and go back. And I'm going to add it just after my constructor there for the JFrame. And there's populate array list. So you agree then that this populate array list will get all of my jobs that's saved inside of the job.dat. So I want to do the exact same thing again. So I'm going to copy that try catch block there. Copy it. And then just after that try catch, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. But now instead of reading from jobs.dat, I'm going to have employees.dat. And let's call this one, uh, we can keep it as file. Let's make it file two, input file two, file two, uh, input file two. And I think we can say the rest is fine. Input file two dot close. Okay, just to make sure that it's it's not giving us problems later on. Okay, so there we connect to the employees.data file. Again, the exact same thing, but instead of adding to jobs now, we're going to say employees.add. And now you can see it's got a problem there because that should be now of type employee when we're reading it back. Okay, so this one will then get all the data from the jobs.data file and add it to the jobs array list. And the next try catch block will get every data from the employees.data file and add it to the employees array list. Right, so now we can save. So what we've got now at, at this stage, when this frame runs right at the start, we can make a connection to the files and we get all the employees and we get all the jobs. So now when the user goes and he clicks on save after entering everything, uh, remember before he actually sees this window, we want to actually show him all of the jobs inside of this specific combo box. So now a nice thing about this uh, source code that's been generated for you, um, let's just go down until you get to generated code. So you'll see somewhere there, there's your J combo box one, and it's got a dot set model there on how they set the data to that combo box. So I'm going to copy that line, basically stealing that line of code there to see how can we set some new data to that specific combo box. So I'm going to copy that whole line there. So if you miss that now, it's under uh, generated code if you scroll a bit down. And that's your init components method. And inside of it, there's this one line that sets the model to your combo box. Okay, so I'm going to use that line. And if you have a look at populate array list, then let's say inside of the constructor, we then call populate array list. So that gets everything from the files running this method. And then after that, I'm going to set that combo box now. So in order to set the combo box, I need to have string values for that jobs. So I'm going to say for 
integer i equals zero, i less than. Actually, we can do this. You can do it in a for loop right here, but you can also do it while you are basically getting the data here and adding them to the jobs array or array list. So I think let's rather just do it there at the top so that we don't confuse anyone. So what I'm going to need there is a string array. So you can see this. Let me just paste that line of code that we stole there from the init components. You can see that this one line, jcombobox.setModel, that's got a problem here now. Expected a semicolon. Okay, now it's 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 because uh, I'm I'm not done with this line there. So let me just remove it quickly. Okay, so then this set model is fine. So you'll see basically that the set model uh, takes in a new string array. So that's why I want to declare a string array here, and let's call this one uh, jobs array. And I'm going to set this array the same size as there's elements in my jobs array now. So I'm going to say jobs dot size and that gives me the array to be exactly the same size as the jobs array there. Okay, so now or the same size as the jobs array list. Now I'm going to run a for loop integer i equals zero i less than let's say jobs dot size gives me the number of elements inside of the jobs array list, which is the number of jobs I've got saved on the file and I plus plus. And then I'm going to do the following. Now inside of this for loop, I want to run through every element in the jobs array list and create a string representing it. So I'm going to say jobs array, which is the array now at that position of I, and I'm going to set it to jobs dot get I that gives me the object from the array list and I'm going to call get name of job. And then maybe we can add a plus there and put a comma and then also show the amount of or the rand value for that specific job by calling jobs dot get I again gets the object dot get salary will get you the salary. And I think let's use a decimal format class also. So it's going to be import java.text.star to get the decimal format to class. I think let's me de let us declare it at the top decimal format formatter. And then somewhere here, let's do it there. Formatter equals new decimal format. And then the decimal format should format the code as let's put a hash comma hash 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 dot zero zero so we can separate the thousands with a comma there. Okay, so then when we say jobs dot get salary, I will say formatter dot format and then passing in that whole jobs dot get salary and that will format it nicely. So in the for loop, then when it, when it runs, we're going to get the jobs or set the jobs array at every single position in the loop by going to the jobs array list and getting the name and the salary and setting them. And then when this for loop is done, you'll actually we can we can call jcombobox one dot set model. But instead of having this initialized uh, string there, we're going to have our own one that we called jobs array and that sets the model so let's just let's just see if it works so if we run it now let's go to add new employee employees no uh, nothing exists but you can see it it got the job from or this cleaner job from our um, jobs data file that already exists so if I close down this one and I go and add a new job, let's add a programmer there. And let's say the salary there is 25,000. We save it, successfully saved, and we go to add new employee. Uh, there's no employees data, but you can see that job has been added to this combo box. Okay, so now we can do the rest. We can then ask the user or the employee for his name and his surname and his staff number and get those values. So you will need to choose a job there, but we don't need to check if it's empty because it will always have some value inside of it. Okay, so now let's go and look at the data that we want to get from this. So you can see that text field is JTextField1 for the name, the surname, 
and so basically JTEX field 1, 2 and 3. So let's go to the save button now. So double click your save button. It takes you to the private inner class to the action performed method and you can start do your coding there. So the first thing we want to do again is to test if those text fields are empty or not. So it's going to be JTEXT field 1.getText dot is empty. So if that one is empty or JTEXT field 2.getText dot is empty. Or let me just copy this one. Or date J text field three could also be empty. So if any one of them are empty, we're going to show a J option pane dot show message dialog. First argument null. Second argument. Please enter all fields. Right, and then if all the fields are entered, that is now the else part there. If we know everything is entered, the else part will be what we want to do now if, the, if everything is entered. So the first thing, if you go to your design again, you want to have the name and the surname. So let's get the name and the surname first. So we're going to say string name equals j text field. That's the first text field dot get text. And you can call dot trim there on it to make sure that there's no white space. Then the surname will be J text field one, sorry, two dot get text dot trim. That gets me the surname. So if you go back to design, that's J text field one. This one clicked is J text field two. Then to choose a job there, you need to go to to get either the selected item or you can go and get the selected index. So I think the index will be better here to use. So to choose a job there, let's say int job index equals. Now look at the combo box quickly. If you click on design, the combo box is J combo box one. So go back to source J combo box one dot get selected index now that gets me the selected index the one that the user is currently selected now remember the index in your combo box will be the exact same index that you have in your jobs array list because right at the top we said uh, how did we create that combo box we said we use the you were using this jobs array which is the same index as jobs so basically we can just go and say if that is the index then i know the job will be or the job object let's call job job equals going to the jobs array list dot get and which position should i get it at that job index so now i know that that is the jobs object that the guy selected which is part of my array list so now i've got the name i've got the surname i've got the job so the last thing i need then I've got the name, surname, and the job. The last one I need is the staff number. So to get the staff number, it's also, I think the sta staff number is in fact an integer. So we, let's just call that one staff. Let's have a look at this employee class quickly. The staff number is an integer, yes. So let's just go and say staff number there equals. Now we need to cast this to an integer because what you get from a text field is always a string. So integer dot pass int, and then we're going to pass in what we want to convert to an integer, which is J text field three. Now, so if we go back to design, it's this one, J text field three. Dot get text. Dot trim, just to make sure that there's no white space, and then that will give us the staff number as an integer, and now I can create. The new employee object so employee employee equals new employee and now let's look at the employee class quickly you can see the constructor accepts the name the surname the job and the staff number so it's first the name then the surname 
then the job object, and then the staff number. And there our object has been created. Right, so now we've got a new employee that we created. And now what we need to do is to go and add this employee to our array list. So our array list is called employees.add, and we're going to add this new employee. Right, and that is it for saving the employee. But now remember, it's only saved in the array list. We need to go and save it. If you remember, add new job, we had a method save the jobs to file. So I'm going to copy that method quickly. Let's go back to add employee. And we're going to have that exact same method. So I think let's add the method before the populate array list there. Doesn't matter really where you add it. But now to save the jobs, it's not going to be jobs. It's going to be save employees to file. We need to go to the employees, employees dot data file. And you can see it's the output stream. So we want to save it. What do we want to save? Everything in my employees array list. So there must be employees array list and getting all the objects and saving them to the employees.data file. What did the um, populate array list method do? It got all the jobs, placed them in the jobs array list. It got all the employees and placed it inside of the employees array list. So now when we call this method, save employees to file employees already exist with current employees in it or maybe nothing and it's it's saving all the data inside of your employees array list back to the file so save employees to file is the method we want to call then right after doing that save employees to file and that saves my data to the file now also remember let's just go back to that method save Employees to file successfully saved. Okay, no, no, that's that's fine then. Okay, so if you run it now, and we go and say add new employee, there's no employees yet. So let's add a, a, an employee there. Let's say John Rambo. He's a, a programmer, and his staff number is one, two, three, four, five. Click on save. You can see it's successfully saved. We dispose of it. And when we go back to add new employee, you can see it exists now. It doesn't ask us for the file or say that the file does not exist anymore. So unfortunately, we can't see that employee right now. We'll do that in the next um, window. Okay, so now we are able to save a new employee and we can check that by going to edit the employee data, which we'll do now. Okay, so let's go to editing the employee data now. So I think I'm going to have open add employee, close that one, close job and close employee. And then let's go to edit an employee. Okay, so now to edit an employee, you can see that we've got two combo boxes there that we need to fill. We need to fill choose employee and we need to fill employee job. So that will be a list of all the employees, and this will be the list of all the jobs. So now again, if we go to source, I want to have a few declarations there at the top. So I'm going to have all those import statements the same as I had in my add employee. I'm going to have them at the top. And I'm also going to have those three declarations. Why do I have to have both jobs and employees because in the design I want to place the employees there and all the jobs there again. Okay, so that is then let's just have this one also. We can also have populate array list because we're going to use that exact same method. So I'm going to copy all of those, go to design, and then inside of init components I will paste it there and that will create a new array list and the new array list. Now populate array list, let's copy that method also. We're going to use it again. So I'm going to copy that whole method. There we go. And then after edit employee, we can call that method. Okay, so what, what do we have in the edit employee? If you save now, you should have not have any errors. So right at the start, we've got our two array lists with the decimal format, to all, obviously. Uh, we initialize the array list, then we call populate array list. Populate array list will go to the jobs data file and add all the jobs to the jobs array list. Also, 
it will go to the employees data file and add all the employees to the array list. So now when this application or when this file starts, this frame starts, we've got all the employees and we've got all the jobs. We just need to set them now to the two combo boxes. Okay, so now what I want to do then again, like we did here, let's go to the top, like we did in this part, I'm going to copy that whole part again. And then after populating the array list, we can do the same thing. The jobs array will be going to all the jobs, placing all the jobs in the jobs array and going to J combo box. But now it's not J combo box one. This one is J combo box two. So this part will then be just become a two there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the exact same thing to set all the employees. So I'm going to copy that whole thing there. And let's call this one emp array and that one should be employees dot size it's going to be employees there as well and the same there in fact let's let's redo this one we'll do that one now and it's going to be j combo box one so what do we want to have not in the jobs array now but in the employee array so in employees array what we want to show there is maybe just if you go to design what do we want to choose there for the maybe just showing the guy's username or not username his name and his surname so what we'll have there is to call get uh, get i first gets the employee object and then on the object we can call get name so let's say name and then a comma and then maybe his surname or maybe his surname first and then his name. It's up to you what you want to do there. So I'm going to say employees then dot get that gets the object. Go to I and I'm going to say dot get surname. That gets me the surname. So that's what I want to set there. And I'm setting J combo box one to all the employees. So let's run this quickly and see if it works. So we're going to go to edit, edit employee. There we go. Uh, I've set set the same thing at the top and the bottom so let me just see there Jumbo. okay so there it should be emp array employees array and let's run it again let's go to edit employee and there you can see there's all the employees john rambo there's all the jobs okay so now let's let's go and add a few more employees so let's say uh, chuck norris chuck norris should be a programmer and his staff number is 4567. Save, successfully saved. Go to edit. And you can see John Rambo and Chuck Norris. Okay. So now the next part is if the user chooses, let's say, Chuck Norris there, then I want to update all four fields at the bottom. I want to set the employee's name, the surname, uh, whether it's a cleaner or a programmer, and the staff number. I want to set all the details to these fields. So how do we do that? So obviously, it's a click event that's part of this combo box. So in order to get to the click event for the combo box, go to design, double click on your combo box, and where your cursor is at, that will be what happens when you make a selection inside of your combo box. So if you make a selection in the combo box, what do we want to do now? So the first thing that we want to do is to go and check which index is selected in the combo box so that I know which employee is selected. So I'm going to say selected, selected index equals. And now if you go to design again, this is J combo box one, or you can also see it in the coding J combo box one action performed. So I'm going to go to J combo, combo box one dot get selected index and that gets me the index that was selected and now I know which employee I'm actually talking about because if I go to my employees array list now at that exact same index I will get that employee that I'm talking about okay so now what we want to do in the design now if the user then clicks a specific employee I want to set his name to J text field one so I'm going to go to J text field one dot set text and I'm going to set the text to employee 
or employees, which is the array list, dot get the object for me at that selected index. That gives me the, the object for uh, the one that's selected. And then what do I want to do with that object? I want to go and get the name. Okay, so that will be get the name. And then on the next JText field, let me just go to design again, which is the surname, which is JText field 2. So to JText field 2, I want to set the text as employees dot get again selected index but now I want to call get surname and that gives me the surname for that person okay now I'll go back to design we're going to do this one now let's do the staff number first which is j text field 3 so j text field 3 dot set the text and the text should be well exactly the same thing until there but then we want to call get staff number let me just make sure about that method dot get staff number and that gets the staff number but be, be because uh, the staff number is returning an integer and you want to set some text you can just add a double quotation mark there and then it will set it so if you run it now we're going to get to that combo box now if you run this now and you go to edit employee and you make a selection you can see it it enters Chuck Norris's data and clicking on John Rambo will enter John Rambo's values except for his job at this stage so you can see also that when you start off with this application if you start right at the beginning you can see that this one actually doesn't show the data for John Rambo so maybe what we want to do right at the start is after init components there we can go and say or maybe even after setting all of these let's go right at the bottom we will say j combo box one dot set selected index and we're going to set the selected index as zero so let's just try that one out so basically what we're saying is we're going to select that one at position zero and you can see by selecting it at position zero, it's as if I clicked on it myself. So you can see now running it, going into it. If it's on Jan John Rambo, it's going to show the info for John Rambo right at the start. Okay, so now if I click on Chuck Norris, it shows Chuck Norris's data. And now the only one that we need to go and have a look at is this employee job there. Okay, so let's go back to design again. Let's make sure that we go back to this one to double click on that one. So it's back you back to the code. So we've set what should happen with the text fields. Now remember that in this object now we can have a job. I'm just going to declare a job object there quickly again. So job job equals and then I'm going to go to this employee that was selected. So I'm going to call dot get selected index now that gets me the employee object and then on that object i'm going to call get job and that gets me the job that was saved for that employee and now what i want to do is to quickly run through a for loop integer i equals zero i less than and i'm going to run through the jobs array list that's all the jobs and then i'm going to say i plus plus there to run through all of the jobs and what I want to do there is to check what is the index in my jobs array list for this specific job of the employee. So I'm going to say if jobs.getI.equals this new job of mine. Right, so if the two job objects are the same, then I know it's at that specific in index. So let me just have an index value there, int index. And then we're going to set the index there, index equals, and it's going to be i, just to save the index. And if I got the index, I can just call break, which will break me out of the for loop, and then I can carry on. So now I've got the index of the job. So first I go to the employees array list, the selected one on this first combo box, that selected value, go to that specific employee and get his job. Then run through the jobs array list 
because in the jobs array list from the jobs array list we've set this one okay so in the jobs array list we get the job at a specific position and test it for this job there if it's found we know where it's found and that's the exact same index that we placed on the second combo box right so now after we've got that one we can basically just go and say j combo box and that one is the second j combo box two dot set selected index and it will be set to index now let's make that one zero right at the start just to make sure but in any case we will find it because it's one of the of the jobs so it won't be a problem but just initialize it to zero there okay then uh, if you run it now let's just see if it works now right so let's go to edit edit employee you can see john rambo chuck norris is also a programmer so it seems as if both are saved as a programmer let's just save one as a cleaner uh, peter pollock he's a cleaner and his staff number is six eight nine six eight seven eight nine zero save successfully saved so if we go to edit employee let's go to peter pollock you can see he's a cleaner and chuck norris as well as john rambo is both programmers let's just add another cleaner there quickly um, let's say sam smith whatever cleaner staff number save successfully saved so if we go to employee now let's go to sam smith you can see he's also cleaner same with peter pollock right so i think this system is now working 100 percent and now we've got two buttons at the bottom so you can see even if i click on john rambo and i want to change him now to a cleaner i'm able to do it because there's no click event on this on this specific one so if i go to sam smith it will change that one again but i'm able to change now all of these values and click on save and it should change that specific object so if i click on save there what should happen and if i click on delete what should happen right so if i click on save i want to i want to basically go to this object and make the changes if i click on delete I want to go to this object, remove it from the array list, and then save back the data. Okay, so let's look, just quickly have a look at that one. If you go to design, let's go to the save button first. So where's the save button? There it is. Now, before we do anything else, you'll remember in my add employee, we had a save employees to file. So I'm going to copy that one and go to edit employee and add that method as well. So maybe just there somewhere and this save employees to file you can see it goes to the employees data file using the output stream going to the employees array list and saving everything in the array list okay so we're going to use that same one let's go back to design double click on your save button it will take you back to what we need to do here so if we click save now we want to basically make sure that we get all the data again from the user so it's just exactly the same as saving the data in the add employee so if you click on double click that save button it's basically this exact same thing so i'm going to copy this quickly and go to edit employee double click on the save button and i'm going to paste the coding here it's just going to be a bit different now because if we go to design now we've got a text field j text field one text field 2 and text field 3 so let me just check there j text field 1 2 and 3 we want to check if they're not empty we're going to say please enter all fields then what are we going to do then actually for this part i i think i should do something totally different here so let's remove all of this now let, let's just go back to design now so if the user clicks on the save button we first check that these fields are not empty so now the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we're working with this object that was selected there so i think let's just get that selected object again so we're basically going to do the same as we did there by saying the selected index should be j combo box one dot get selected index and then i can start working with a specific employee now so on that employee employee or employees we're going to say dot get i or not i selected index that gives me that specific 
employee. And then you can remember that we've got some setter methods there. So then I'm going to set the name to whatever is typed in jtextField1. So I'm going to say jtextField1.getText. And then I'm going to pass in uh, or just going to call the trim method there. Okay, so that is setting, going to the, the object that was selected and setting the name to whatever is typed in jtextField1. Then I'm going to also say, let me just copy this line. Selected index dot set name. So we're going to set the surname as well to be dot get. Let me just see which one is the surname. It is jtextField2. So we're going to go to jtextField2 dot get text dot trim. And then we're going to also set uh, Let's say set the staff number, which is the easier one to do. So we're going to say set staff number. And let me just make sure about that method dot set staff number. There we go. And the staff number is at this one, jtext field three. So we're going to say jtext field three dot get text dot trim. But again, this is an integer. Sorry, so we need to convert this to an integer. So we're going to say integer dot pass int and we convert that one to an integer. OK, so now we've got we've changed the employee's name, his surname, his staff number. And now we want to change his job and to change the job. I'm just going to create a job object quickly. So we're going to say job job equals and then I'm going to go to the jobs array list and I'm going to get a job at a specific position and the specific position that I'm talking about will be the position that we are in this specific combo box also. So that will be the job at combo box two. So I'm going to go to J combo box two dot get selected index because that gets that selected index. Let me just say the get there. Uh, that gets me the specific index for the, the J combo box where that one was selected. And it should be the same in my jobs array. Let's just let me see what's going on there now. Uh, sorry, two brackets there at the end. OK, so creating a new job object, go to the jobs array list. But it should be at the position that the combo box two is selected. Is it the same as the position inside of my array list? Okay, so now I've got the job that the new employee should have or the existing employee should have. So I'm going to say employees dot get again. Let me just paste that line again. Dot get selected index dot set the now in this case set the job and the job should be set to this job that I just created there. OK, so then we have saved everything on that new employee object or that existing employee object. So we go to the object that was selected and we use the setters to change it. And then after setting it or after changing it, we can then call this method now. Where is that method now? Save employees to file to save the new data to the file. Okay, so we're going to call save employees to file and that will save all my employees to the file again. Right, let's test this one quickly out. And we'll run it. Go to edit employee. So there's John Rambo. So John Rambo is currently a programmer. So let's change John Rambo to a cleaner. And we say save. Successfully saved. OK. Go back. Let's see if John Rambo is now a cleaner. Yes, he is. OK, so let's change uh, Sam Smith to be Sam Peterson. Click on save. Save successfully. Go back. There's Sam Peterson. OK, so I think the save or the change function is working 100%. Let's quickly have a look at the delete function there. So if I want to delete something now from that array list, uh, so we're going to go to delete, double click on delete. Again, the first thing we want to do is to get which index was selected. So I'm going to use that single line again. Let me just make sure I'm in the correct method now. Delete. Double click delete. Yes. Right. So the first thing we do is to get the selected index from J combo box one. So this 
which what is the employee that we want to delete so it's at index number one and then I, I know that in, in my employees array list I can get that specific one or I can remove it by just calling remove and at which index do I want to remove it and I want to remove it at the selected index the same index that we chose there so that removes my employee then from that array list and then I just can just call that method again save employees to file right and that saves my employee to the file again or all my employees to the file after that one has been removed so let's run it quickly and see how it works go to edit employee let's say we want to delete Chuck Norris now I'm gonna say delete uh, we just we should just change that to method baby maybe, maybe successfully saved okay if you go back to edit employee Chuck Norris is not there anymore okay so maybe for this method where are we now save to file save employees to file let's have a second one there second method save employee to file and I'm gonna add a delete there so we will say successfully delete it okay so it's save employees to file delete oh, where's that one now let me just have a look at the delete button again right there it is so instead of save employees to file I'm gonna say delete include it there right so if you run it again now it will show us the message it's been deleted right so let's delete John Rambo there, delete, successfully deleted, go back, John Rambo is not there anymore. And that's the simple application on how you can work with employees, saving data, deleting data, displaying them on different combo boxes. So I hope you have learned something from this video.